day. Welcome to Math 11. Teacher Rod is here. I'm your facilitator for this day. I want you to sit back and enjoy the journey of learning. For today's objective, you are able to solve problems involving partitive proportions. Let's have first idea of what is partitive proportion. We have three siblings would like to eat in a restaurant. So at this manner, at this situation, how come we come up with the idea of the partitive proportion? Yes, the concept of sharing. So the sharing, that is one, is a two, is a three. So that is the sharing of the three siblings. That is what we call the concept for the partitive proportions. Just imagine, you go to any restaurant, if you have your sharing, and that is their proportion. Or let's say that is their ratio. One is a two is a three. Maybe in your part, that is two is the four is a six. It means, we must know how to identify parts of a pool based on a given ratio of these parts. Let us start first what is partitive proportion. It is a proportion that divides the whole into two or more unequal parts. That is partitive. For the proportion, it is written in a given equation. We have Ax is to Bx is to Cx is equal to M. Where A, B, and C are the unequal parts, X is the constant of proportionality, and M is the total amount, or let's say the whole, the amount of the whole, or let's say what is being described as a whole. Let's discover this. If we go back in our idea in a previous presentation, three siblings decided to eat in a restaurant. They decided that they will divide their payments in the ratio of 1 is a 2 is a 3. If their bill is amount to 1,500 pesos, then their share of payment will be, so we have the given representation. Let A is equal to sibling A, let B is sibling 2, let C is sibling 3. For the solution, in a given situation, so first you have to understand the given problem. Then, from that point, you have to devise a plan of how do we attack or let's say to solve the given problem. So you have this given ratio, 1 is a 2 is a 3, and their amount is 1,500. So from the given ratio, you can identify the total share, that is 6 parts. So that's why we have x plus 2x plus 3x is equal to 1,500. 1,500, that is a total amount. Okay? Then, So, we have 1 over 6 for letter A, sibling 1. Why is it 1 over 6? Because we have the ratio of 1 into 6 parts. Then multiply it to 1,500. The other one, 2 over 6, same thing, multiply it to 1,500. That is for sibling 2. For the sibling 3, the share is 3 out of 6. Multiply to 1,500. So, if we get the product of those siblings, for sibling A, that is 250 pesos. Sibling 2, we have 500 pesos. Sibling 3, that is 750 pesos. So, these are the amount of their share. Okay, so... We have the given situation and their solution for each item. 
for each share, 1 over 6 for sibling 1, 2 over 6 for sibling 2, 3 over 6 for sibling 3. Again, how do we get 6? This is the total share. So now, we have 250 pesos, 500 pesos, and 750 pesos are the corresponding payment to the ratio of 1 to 2 is to 3. Let's have another example. John and Marcia are partners and share their profits in the ratio of 4 is to 5. If Marcia's share in the profit was 360,000 pesos, how much was John's share? Let us illustrate the given situation in a tabular manner, in tabular form. We have John and Marcia, their ratio, 4 and is to 5, then the profit. Since we already identified the share of Marcia, profit of Marcia, so we are now looking for the John's share, that's the variable x. Then, the total for the ratio, the total is 9, the total share. Then for the profit, we use the capital letter N. Since we already not yet identified the total profit. So let X, the John's profit, let N, the total profit. For the solution, we have the given situation. So we have 5 over 9 times n is equal to 360,000. The 5 over 9, this is the Marcia's Marcia share. And the 360,000, that is his a uh, her profit. So, we sold for the value of n. So, we apply the cross product. We have to multiply by 9 both sides. And divide by 5. So we have 9. N is equal to 9 over 5. Multiply to 360,000. Which is equal to 648,000. So. To solve for John's share. 648,000. That is a total profit. Then you have to subtract. By 360,000. Marshall's share profit. And we have now 288,000 pesos. That is done share. Let's have another example. Alan Quinn decided that their profit and loss sharing ratio should be equal to their capital investment. If Al and Quinn had capital balances of 200,000 pesos, and 150,000 pesos respectively. How much profit would Al get if Queen got 60,000 pesos? Let's illustrate this in a tabular form. So we have the balances and the share. For Al balances, that is 200,000. Queen capital balances. That is 150,000 with a total of 350,000. For this share, for all share, we have 200,000 over, all over 350,000. Queen share, that is 150,000 over 350,000. And we have to solve for the total share. We have the given situation. Then to solve for the value of n, so let n the total profit sharing. So queen share is 150,000 over 350,000 multiplied by n is equal to 60,000 pesos. If we solve for the value of n, that is equivalent to 140,000 pesos.
So I'll share is 140,000 minus the 60,000 pesos. And that is equivalent to 80,000 pesos. So I'll share now is equivalent to 80,000 pesos. For the learning summary, Part of the proportion, it is a proportion that divides the whole into two or more unequal parts. We can write the proportion in the manner of equation. A to x is to bx is to cx, which is equal to m. Where a, b, and c are the unequal parts, X is the constant of proportionality and M is the total amount. And that ends our discussion for today. It ends for our discussion for today. Did you understand it very well? If not, you may go back to the video or module Learning is eternal like mathematics. Have a great day!